Through King Henry VIII's reign, John Trudgeon Sr. married Catherine Arundel, who was also from an aristocratic Catholic Cornish family. John and Catherine had several children, the oldest being a son named Francis, who was born in the late 1540s. Also in the late 1540s, King Henry VIII died, and his young son Edward became king. Edward's reign continued with the establishment of the Church of England. He died at the age of 15, and a controversy then ensued over who should be the next monarch. Eventually, Princess Mary, daughter of Henry VIII and his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, was crowned queen. Mary was loyal to the memory of her Catholic mother and promptly set about to restore Catholicism to England. During her reign, there was much contention and bloodshed over religion, and historians have nicknamed her Bloody Mary because over 800 Protestants were executed during her reign. After Mary's death in 1558, Princess Elizabeth, daughter of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, was crowned queen. She immediately reestablished the Church of England as the state religion. Parliament enacted laws against anyone founding practice Catholicism or any other religion not associated with the Church of England. For English people who were in the poorest classes of society, the penalty usually would consist of some sort of a fine. However, many of the gentry in England during this time were still practicing Catholics, and it was very common for a Catholic aristocratic family to have its own priest on its estate, living in disguise. It was also common for these aristocrats to secretly send their sons over to the continent to further their religious education. Therefore, Parliament passed a series of very severe anti-Catholic laws aimed directly against those members of the gentry who still practiced Catholicism secretly on their own problems. The penalties were extremely severe. If you were caught harboring a Catholic priest on your estate, you would be stripped of your title, your lands, and all of your possessions. You would be thrown into prison for the rest of your life, and your priest would suffer a hideous execution by drawing and quartering. This was the England in which the last two generations of the Trudgeon family, who most concern us, lived, the generation of Francis Trudgeon Sr. and Francis Trudgeon Jr. Around 1570, Francis Trudgeon married Mary Storton, the daughter of Charles VIII Baron Storton. Soon after his marriage, Francis Trudgeon secretly went abroad to further his Catholic religious studies. Upon his return, he stayed with his wife and his children for a time in Cornwall, but then he decided to go to London to live as a courtier in Elizabeth's court so that he could plead the Catholic cause before the Queen. From all accounts, it seems that Francis was a very charming and successful courtier, and eventually he did get the attention of the Queen, although certainly not in a way that he had intended. It seems that Elizabeth was enamored of Francis Trudgeon, and she sent one of her ladies-in-waiting to Trudgeon's room late one night with the royal proposition. Elizabeth proposed to make Francis a viscount if he would become her lover. Francis was greatly upset by this royal request, as he wished to honor his marriage vows, yet he knew that he and his family would be in great danger if he refused the queen. He told the lady-in-waiting that he was very ill and that he could not comply. A short time later, Queen Elizabeth herself came to Trudian's room, where she again offered to make him a viscount if he would become her lover. Again, quick, Trudian quickly refused, this time saying to the queen that she could have his entire family fortune and all of his possessions. She could have everything that was his, except for his conscience. Elizabeth was absolutely furious at the audacity of this royal insult. For his part, Trudian knew that he was in great danger, and he immediately packed his bags and fled back to Cornwall to his family. The furious queen then ordered her knight marshal, George Carey, to fetch Trudian from Cornwall and severely punish him without delay. Trudian was tried in the Queen's court and was found, found guilty of recusancy or refusing to attend the services of the Church of England. He was stripped of all his properties, titles, and possessions and thrown into Launceston Prison, one of the most notoriously dangerous prisons in England at that time. The Trudian family priest, Cuthbert Main, who had been living in disguise on the estate as the gardener, was sentenced to die by drawing and quartering. Trudian's wife, Mary, chose to join her husband in prison, and over the course of the next two years, she gave birth to two children in those, two children in those filthy conditions. Eventually, she was persuaded to leave her husband in the prison and return to her mother. 
Mary Trojan's family was able to exert some influence at court because eventually Elizabeth was persuaded to let Francis leave the Lonston prison for the more hospitable Fleet Prison in London, which housed white collar criminals, debtors, and political dissidents. Here he remained for the next 24 years until the death of Queen Elizabeth in 1603. The conditions of the Fleet were much improved over the Lonston prison. Trojan now had his own room and was allowed to have his personal effects which included a large collection of books. Again, his wife Mary chose to join her husband in prison, and over the next 24 years, many more children were born to them in the fleet. After the ascension of James I of Scotland to the throne, anti-Catholic sentiment was still running very high. Therefore, in 1606, James ordered the release of Francis Trudgeon, who was now a cult figure of sorts, and commanded him to leave England at once. Trudgeon immigrated to Spain, where he was welcomed as a hero by the Spanish monarch. He died in 1608, and eventually was buried at the church of St. Roche in Lisbon, standing up facing England, in remembrance of how he stood up against Queen Elizabeth. Today, his burial place is considered to be a shrine and a site of pilgrimage. I will now play a piece by Peter Phillips, entitled Habana Dolorosa Trudgeon, which pays tribute to the trials and tribulations of the Trudgeon family. As a recusant Catholic, Phillips had also fled England in 1580 and subsequently had a very successful career on the continent. It is likely that Francis Trudgeon Jr., the compiler of the Fitzwilliam Virgil book, and com uh, composer Peter Phillips knew each other, as both of them had worked in Rome for a cardinal and later both lived in Brussels and worked for the Archduke at the same time. A pavan is a slow and stately court dance which was popular in the Renaissance era, usually in duple meter. As I perform this piece, listen for the unexpected and strikingly beautiful tonal changes from C to E and also from A to F as the piece switches from one 